In September of 2001, my mother was in the second month of the last year of her life. She had dementia from Parkinson's disease and mini strokes, and she had heart trouble and high blood pressure. I used to say she had everything you can think of that could be wrong with a person except cancer, although that's an exaggeration. It just felt that way to her and to me. We lived in an apartment building in downtown Brooklyn, across from the tip of Lower Manhattan, and right by the edge of the BQE, the Brooklyn Queens Expressway. The traffic is constant, like the ocean, but the big trucks make everything shake, and when there's a crash, or when a car drops a hubcap, and every other car runs over it, ka-thump, ka-thump, all night long, you want to kill somebody, preferably Robert Moses, except he's already dead. <laughs> <laughs> I went to my part-time job on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. On Tuesdays and Thursdays, a home health aide would come in the afternoon, and I would use the free time to write. So on this Tuesday morning, I was at home, instead of all the way uptown at work. When the first plane hit, it sounded like a bomb. I actually felt the reverberations. And I said, God damn, BQE. I didn't even look out the window. If I had, I could have seen the plane rammed into the World Trade Center, the smoke and the flames. I could have seen it, and I didn't even look. When the second plane hit, I said, God damn dumpsters. There's always some construction going on with all the gentrification, and they toss what sounds like entire buildings into dumpsters, and I still didn't look. About an hour later, I got a call from the social worker who coordinates the home health aides. She seemed to be on some kind of acid trip. The Pentagon and the World Trade Center and something in Pennsylvania. And, okay, okay, I said, whatever. I took the chance of leaving my mother alone and went up on the roof. By now, it was just a big pillar of smoke, like something out of the Old Testament. Only a couple of other people were up there on a Tuesday morning. They're collapsing, a man said. Marisol, the aide, came after all. Her morning client lived in Brooklyn, too, so she just came over to us as usual. Instead of writing, I went out and bought a cell phone, my first. Outside, the first bits of debris were landing in downtown Brooklyn, mostly office paper, reports, memos, those pink while-you-were-out memos, the detritus of a thousand offices. Back home, we saw the column of smoke bending directly toward us, an anti-rainbow, gray and black against the brightest of cloudless blue skies, its two poles, death and destruction. We kept the windows shut tight for days. The last things my mother was able to read and understand was a series of New York Times articles about the problems the firefighters had had with their radio system, communicating with the other services. Every once in a while, she would look up from the paper and say, do you mean to tell me that somebody flew an airplane into the World Trade Center on purpose? I would say yes. And it fell down? Yes. She never went to the window to look either. Her memory of the Manhattan skyline was from the 1950s, when we moved here. So this would not have looked weird to her. Jane Austen once said of the Napoleonic Wars, how horrible it is to have so many people killed, and what a blessing that one cares for none of them. That's how I was, and I'm sorry. I want to acknowledge it, to say to all of the people who died and their families, I'm sorry for your loss.